welcome to this module on best practices in the classroom dealing with gender and diversity issues. So, in this module we are going to focus specifically on communication issues uh, both while teaching as well as in laboratory sessions related to science technology, engineering and mathematics. Now, a lot of research has shown that in STEM departments there are issues relating to learning among people of minority backgrounds or people who are women, uh, there is a lot of dropouts, there is attrition that is happening. So, these are things that need to be arrested, so that uh, more people are encouraged to take up learning and careers in STEM departments and disciplines and more innovation and learning and research takes place in different STEM disciplines. We know that in society there is socialization that emphasizes gender differences, but that cannot be brought into the classroom. So, in the classroom it is important that we teach that every individual is of equal worth, but we also recognize that the way in which we teach, the way in which we engage classes, they differentially affect various populations in our classroom, because they all come with different kinds of backgrounds, encouragements and learning issues into our classes. So, the focus here is on communication with reference to pedagogy and teaching methods. Some general suggestions to ensure that people from different backgrounds all are equally able to learn in the classroom that is nobody feels discriminated against are given here in this slide. So, the first is to emphasize methods from a variety of fields or interdisciplinary approaches to problem solving. So, any particular problem that we take up in the classroom in any subject. So, we should first emphasize that this problem can be looked at from a multidisciplinary perspective and it can be addressed from many different disciplines. When we carry out experiments as far as possible women should be involved not only men, observations in scientific research should go beyond those traditionally carried out. For example, they should not be restricted only to textbooks. In a class on biology, one could go out into the garden to carry out different kinds of observations. Personal experiences should be included, so that people feel that they have a personal stake in what they have to learn. So, dealing with subjects mechanically in an abstract way only through textbooks puts people off any subject if people can relate to it at a personal level, then they learn those subjects better. And finally, since not everybody will have an equal interest in all kinds of problems, problems which are not considered worthy of scientific investigation should also be included. For example, one should not use only military illustrations to when we are one is teaching physics or chemistry or different branches of engineering, one could take up other kinds of examples, so that everybody feels equally interested in a particular problem. So, the use of examples is very important here. In the classroom itself, using gender neutral language is very important. So, one could uh, refer to other modules that uh, are available on using gender sensitive language for this. In general, avoid being reductionistic or dualistic or giving binary either or examples. So, all problems have multiple causes. So, whether it is climate we are talking about or food issues or transportation issues or urban planning, health and so on, explaining concepts and theories in relational multi-causal ways helps more people to empathize and get interested in these subjects. And therefore, one should avoid silos that uh, all different disciplines are holistic. This is the essential approach of STEM learning in the modern world. One should also put enhanced efforts into different kind of techniques and strategies of teaching, so that uh, in teaching science, technology, engineering and mathematics, one could also communicate or bring in non-scientists to show that all science, technology, engineering, mathematics subjects are of relevance to the everyday world. And Discussing the practical uses of scientific discoveries and inventions enables everybody to see science in its own social context. This again enhances overall learning despite 
the differences in socialization of men, women and people from different backgrounds. We are going to focus a little bit on teaching methods and classroom dynamics in the rest of this lecture. So, in the classroom one should encourage participation from everybody. If some people are only called upon all the time as part of discussions, other people feel excluded. So, especially people who have traditionally been shy and timid and whose language abilities may not be very high, who are not very confident, they should be called upon to participate in the classroom. So, not just the person who raises his or her hand and the person who is considered to be smart and brilliant by a few people. So, establishing class norms, so that everybody is allowed to speak, allowing wait time, remembering that some people are not willing to immediately give out an answer, they would like to wait for some time before other people explain or give a response, they would like to wait for some time to gather confidence. All of these are very important to ensure that everybody participates equitably in the classroom and feels confident of learning and acquiring knowledge. In large classes, we should personalize as much as possible. So, when the class size is very large, one should use formal and informal mechanisms. Some people are happy and confident speaking, some are more comfortable writing, one could form small study groups, one could rearrange classroom and laboratory settings so that people from different backgrounds are working together and they learn mutually from each other. When you are teaching undergraduate classes, using UG teaching assistance is more useful because students feel more comfortable talking to some people, some others, mentors, teaching assistants who are like them. And some students are afraid or not confident of asking questions or clarifying their doubts in the classroom. So, providing opportunities to meet outside of the classroom enhances the overall learning environment. In laboratories, active participation is required. So, hierarchies in terms of grades, in terms of language abilities, in terms of efficiency in completing tasks or hierarchies between men and women, these are to be avoided. So, lab roles should be distributed to everybody as possible, showing connection to what is being taught in the classroom, showing connection to existing research topics between what is taught and what is practiced in the laboratory. These uh, inculcate more interest among students to participate in lab activities and where possible if students themselves can design labs, it ensures that better learning happens during laboratory classes. In the classroom, as far as possible, provide diverse role models, see if you can get guest faculty who are women, see if you can use women teaching assistants, give examples of women's contribution to science, technology, engineering and mathematics, so that overall some role models and mentorship is given to women students and students from marginalized backgrounds. Language and communication. Here, we ensure that all language is gender sensitive. So, there is another module which deals with gender sensitivity in communication. Try to follow those uh, best practices in your communication by using gender inclusive terms, gender aware terms, gender neutral terms, avoiding generalizations which can constitute stereotypes about women or about particular communities that helps to enhance learning in the classroom and ensuring that all discussion does not degenerate into a debate. Instead, try to have discussions where you can develop a consensus about uh, on different kinds of topics and the uses of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. This again is seen to encourage people from different backgrounds to actually acquire knowledge and get an interest in STEM subjects in the classroom and in laboratories. Thank you. This brings us to the end of this presentation.